morning and welcome to Left, Right and Centre. A new draft national encryption policy from the government has raised hackles in the internet world. Under this new policy, vendors of apps that allow encrypted communication, WhatsApp, iMessage, etc. would have to register with the Indian government and both citizens and businesses alike are not allowed to delete messages for a 90-day period. Doing so would be a violation of the law. The new policy is aimed to address concerns of national security, but consumers and critics are worried, saying these new guidelines are worse than net neutrality. Also on left, right and centre tonight, Nepal's new constitution has been adopted amidst violent protests, making it a federal democratic republic with seven provinces divided along ethnic lines. But the new constitution has alienated many of these ethnic groups, especially the Madheshis in the Terai region bordering India. They claim their rights have been curtailed. Delhi has called for political flexibility in the constitutional process before it was enacted. How will Delhi and Kathmandu now work together? Is this unrest on the border a threat to India's stability in the East as well? But first, of course, our big focus tonight on the government's new plans to police the internet. Is that what it really is about? As we said, vendors of encrypted ap applications will have to register with the Indian government. Uh, and this is uh, encryption that's built into most uh, apps on our phones that we use on a daily basis. We've been asked by the government not to delete any WhatsApp texts uh, for a 90-day period. And if you do so, it will be against the law. They're saying this, is, as we said, is about addressing national security. So is it national security? Is it policing? Where is the line going to be drawn between those two joining me? To talk about these issues, we have uh, from uh, from uh, the Internet Services Provider Association, Rajesh Charya, joining us in the studio. We also have uh, Gadget 360's editorial head, Kunal Dua. From Bangalore, we have uh, Pranesh Prakash, who's the policy director for the Center for Internet and Society, Praveen Swami, who writes extensively on national security uh, issues, and Ejaz Ilmi of the BJP. I want to actually ask uh, Mr. Charya first, if I may, uh, is this policing the internet or is this something that is, is uh, can the government justify this for national security? How do you think they're going to maintain the balance? <clears throat> right now, the draft document has come on the encryption. It was very long awaited because from the ISPI point of view, we are struggling from a long time for changing the encryption from 40 bit to 256 bit. Right now, the, as per the license condition, 40 bit is there, mm -hmm. which is not at all applicable because all the e-commerce, government bank side, airline side, Indian railway side are using more than 128 Mbps. So, what I will say is a good suggestion through the draft paper yeah. for 256. But it's a you are right that the policing they have unfortunately included the customer C into this complete draft paper, and including the C making the horizon very big which is not right from the government's point of view because unnecessarily it will be infringing the privacy of the people mm -hmm. who are using whatsapp wechat or i messages anything and keeping the record for 90 days is also a very uh, troublesome reason first of all the memory of the phone yeah secondly if i lost my phone if my phone corrupt if my message is deleted, anyone can access then that. Then who will be responsible? Okay, Kunal, I want to actually ask you just just simplify it for some of us because you know while one basically can understand this about how I don't want my messages read by somebody else, I don't know what plain text is, what encryption right. is. I don't want to keep my WhatsApp messages for ninety days. I mean, half of them are junk or they're group. I want to delete them. Where is the line going to be drawn as far as you're concerned? How do you explain this to the viewer? I mean, just dumb it down essentially is what I'm asking you. I think just uh, first of all to make it clear that, that WhatsApp or any other application is not specifically mentioned in the document. Right. That's one of the problems in itself that the document is it's so vague. it's so vague. It has the implication. The text is so broad that I mean you can read it in uh, in whatever way you like. Yeah. So if so, there is a provision that any application or service that uses encryption, which is essentially uh, encryption. Like first of all, let's talk about what is encryption because I don't think uh, a lot of viewers might even know what that is. Yeah. When, when you send a message, let's say, how are you on WhatsApp, it's not sent as the letters, how are you, and it's, it's coded into a particular text, and that's what it is, uh, is actually sent uh, between, you know, across the internet. So, and, but all this is obviously hap happening transparent to the users. The users don't even know that WhatsApp uh, messages, for example, are encrypted, right? So, once, 
so the essentially the guidelines are saying that if we count services like whatsapp which use encryption as uh, this, uh, amongst these guidelines then the users have to save all these messages for 90 days and like i said they do not even realize that this is encrypting text okay all right praveen uh, you report extensively on national security you have also looked at these issues of internet security uh, in the past there is a mechanism <coughs> that the government has a system called netra if i believe uh, correctly which is which looks at uh, mobile communication um, well, but uh, so how is that different from this well netra is is a little different it it's if you like the government's uh, sort of net vacuum cleaner it sucks up giant <laughs> amounts of data from all our uh, internet traffic yeah. and in theory searches through it for uh, internet traffic which poses a, a national security hazard and one of the reasons it hasn't you know actu actually done that very well is because the government actually doesn't have the capacity to decrypt a lot of heavily encrypted traffic now there's, there's sort of two bits to this story if you like uh, the first is, I mean, fair enough. So terrorists or criminals use the internet yeah. to communicate, and, and in uh, fact, many attacks have been sort of passed on on the internet, and and that's a yeah. genuine problem. Uh, the United States, for example, because the servers of many of these companies of Google are or of WhatsApp there. are based there, can rapidly get a lawful interception request when when there's a concern about a particular individual's you know phone or Google yeah. chat or whatever. They can get a lawful interception request and very quickly get the information that they want. Now, unfortunately, in India, we're, we're not able to do that. We have to move a request in a foreign court, and there's a long and lengthy process. And in the intelligence world, things have to be, you know, very quick. They're useless if something happens a few days or a few weeks later. So, so a legitimate concern thus far. Now. This breaks up into two real problems and the first real problem is that in our country we haven't had a very robust or credible system for lawful interception. Yeah. So we all know cell phones uh, which are easy to listen into, the government, state governments particularly have been chronic abusers of their interception capability using them for political surveillance. You've had cases where people's uh, personal sort of lives have been cut into and that's, that's a genuine concern about what kind of oversight mechanism are you going to have when you have these powers to right. do this and the second thing is I mean if I'm if I'm not doing anything illegal and the vast bulk of us aren't we, we still have legitimate privacy needs I don't particularly want someone to be listening into uh, some email I'm sending about my you know problems in my family yeah. or uh, financial troubles uh, this is nobody's business that's why after all we stick a bit of glue on an envelope when, when we used to send letters. Letter, right. uh, but I think what most people don't realize is that every time you send a plain text email out, pretty pretty much anyone who has a little degree of sophistication can, can hack read into it, the including the government. Now mm -hmm. the government is saying that actually no, if you you know text your aunt about some medical problem she's having using Telegram, you need to keep the plain text for 90 days and you'll be liable if you don't. So plain text is how it basically... Is how you and I see it. See it in the our cryptographic phone. content, okay. the encrypted content is what goes so over the air, so other people can't Ajaz, snoop on me, it. Let me ask you, shouldn't the government be looking at, from what my, uh, my layperson's understanding of this, two things. One is looking at maybe ways to decrypt this kind of communication, allowing it to be encrypted for the sake of you know, our own privacy and our own rights uh, until they get permission to actually go into our communication. That's one. And the second is make a bid uh, as there has been in the past to have some servers set up in India. That would be something that maybe people would be able to swallow better than this policing. You know, uh, the government of India has tried to speak to various uh, service providers to have their servers in India. Uh, because don't forget, we have uh, 900 million cell phones in the country and about 600 million internet mobile users. And crypt cryptography is a rapidly evolving art. You have different kinds of cryptography. You have lattice space, elliptical, RSA, multivariate. So the, the, the concept behind cryptography is essentially uh, the enhancing it to 256 uh, bits is you make it very difficult for it to hack. And the prime purpose of this entire policy paper, which is right now a policy paper, and the public is supposed to comment for the next uh, one month on this policy paper, we give the suggestions and, 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 and what, what you have. The, the reality is there is no substitute to enlarging the scope for, uh, for real-time national security as Praveen Swami spoke about. 
we may not have succeeded to a large extent, but we do have a situation where, uh, the, with our own sources and resources, we have to look at national security. At the same time, one can't impinge upon the freedom of individuals because uh, the, the, the WhatsApp not being mentioned there, WhatsApp already has an end-to-end user-to-user uh, encryption and decryption. This is how we use WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So the reality is this discussion is very important to move ahead, to find out ways and situations where we can uh, uh, make, make secure e-commerce, e-governance, at the same time look at, at how to enhance a uh, uh, combat mechanism on national security. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Pranish Prakash, come in on this because you know there there does seem to be a legitimate concern of, of national security. Praveen's pointed out. Ajaz Elmi is also making uh, a similar point. But at the end of the day, th there needs to be a little more transparency. These these uh, uh, policy measures seem to be extremely blanket in the way they've been going uh, going around. We saw recently a debate on net neutrality, which also took on these proportions of the rights of. Uh, internet users. What are the rights of internet users uh, in, in this kind of society where everything is out there in cyberspace? I think before looking at uh, rights of individual users, one should look at the issue of national security. Yeah. Because without security, we can't enjoy our rights. If you know we're in, a, in an insecure kind of environment, you can't talk about rights. So we have to talk about national security. The reason I'm concerned uh, very, very concerned about this draft policy is that it decreases national security. For instance, you can think of an analogy in, in a community, you can talk about community security, right? But right. you can't say that I'm making the community more secure by forcing every single person to leave their doors unlocked. No, that allows not just the government to access people's homes, okay, that allows every thief, every person, every foreign spy, to it allows in. everyone to gain access to this. Right. Exactly. So this policy, which is aimed at increasing national security, instead ends up decreasing everyone's national security. And that's the main problem. There are other ways that one can think about that, uh, to allow for lawful access. Uh, etc. And, and these debates are going on elsewhere in the world. Right. But the policy that currently we have, which essentially says that unless the encryption that, uh, you know, unless certain kinds of encryption are mentioned in the law, yeah. you are not allowed to use it. Okay. Okay. That is draconian. Even China and Iran and other countries don't have laws like this. All right, Kunal, you were shaking your head uh, in agreement, I think, with yes, uh, I think, what. Uh, uh, because one of the Pranish provisions thing. is that the uh, all un the, you know all text should be stored unencrypted, which kind of defeats the purpose of encrypting it in the yeah. first place. And uh, you know, businesses are supposed to maintain unencrypted copies of data for 90 days. Now, mm -hmm. imagine anybody hacking knows that if I look hard enough, there is a copy of this particular information, you know, lying completely open for me somewhere. So, so clearly, that's a step back. And another point, I think even if we talk about registration, it's almost like, you know, bringing license Raj ba back in tech. Yeah. That, you know, everybody should register. And it is especially, you know, for somebody, let's say, probably the Google, Googles and the Facebooks, the WhatsApp are yeah. big enough to do that. But what yeah. about the uh, a startup which is just, uh, you know, trying to establish itself? It's going to be very difficult for them to do that. Okay. Uh, Ajaz, let me quickly the respond to that. Because services. Ajaz, quickly respond to that because I have, I want to just come back to our studio guests as well. But uh, I want what? a response on this from, from the BJP. You know, uh, I mean, they, they could be genuine fears, but the fact is, what is the policy paper? It has to be fleshed out in, in its entirety. There will be suggestions from all kinds of people, especially cryptography being a very complex situation. Hmm. The government is looking at making, I mean, from the soft level to a hardness level of cryptography. The digital keys should be in a situation where they can't be hacked into. And obviously, national security is of prime concern in the era we are living in. We have, we have jihadi elements, we have the Lashkar, we have all kinds of people. We don't want to repeat our 26-11. It's very, very difficult to, okay. because the, the terrorists sorry. need to get lucky yes. in just one day. I'm, I'm sorry, but The nation has to be yeah. prepared every single day. You know, so wait, it's important wait. from that aspect. But, okay. but there's no... Yes. All right, yes. I, 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 to I'm you. sorry, but that's, that's just plain silliness. I mean, look, the Lashkar e Taiba uh, uh, is not going to keep unencrypted plain text copies of uh, <laughs> its, its communications right. because the government of India passes a law. You and I are, you know. Yeah. And I don't particularly want some. Well, the government has to decrypt their encrypted copies. 
the no no the government is asking me to store a plain text of my encrypted co uh, communication for a, po a period of 90 days that's in the policy paper so leave that as i mean leave yeah. leave that as well, you are not last year toiba <laughs> that that that's correct. Hopefully not. That that would be correct. What I'm saying is the security. You mentioned the lashkar e taiba, yes. saying that you know we're concerned about them. They are not going to keep plain text copies, but the law requires me to keep yeah. a plain text. But copy. also, I, I want to just uh, ask a follow-up question, Praveen. Since you cover national security so much, I mean, we're talking about as you said, you and I and our communication. You, we know we've covered. We've been sort of reporting out of Delhi for long enough to know there are enough bureaucrats, there are enough ministers, there are enough government servants who are communicating on open Gmail, Yahoo, right, uh, and things like that. How does that <laughs> tie in with this need for well, national that, security? That that makes our government exceptionally vulnerable to espionage. And you know, one of the things that's often exactly. joked about in national security circles is that look, we we don't need data sharing agreements with the U.S. because anyway they can listen to everything we do. We are remarkably, you know, uh, relaxed about these things. Uh, but having that, I think that the, this this goes the the core of this problem. Leaving aside, a, you know, very badly drafted policy hmm. paper that clearly hasn't had a lot of thinking go into it. I, I think the core of this problem comes down to trust. If citizens were reasonably sure that look, powers being given to get keys to decrypt communication will only be used through a rigorously enforced legal process, that would be that would be one thing. But there's some bad history here of abuse, yeah. and which is chronic and rampant to this day of you know phone interception requests being done through ISPs at the lower level without proper sanctions, <laughs> without proper cause, uh, and and it I I think for this debate to go forward, yes, the government does need lawful access and uh, lawful interception capacities, but with that power should come accountability, and and so, this paper says nothing about so, this. Mr. Charya, in your view, what would this, the contours of this accountability be then? If no, this no. One they want to I agree this. with Pradeep that uh, this is very bad paper. I will term it as a Bollywood masala film <laughs> wherein we have to put a lot of things and the movie is ready. The main problem in this paper is including the customer, the C, yeah. I earlier told. Yeah. There is no sense of keeping the text. Why? If let's assume that if I am encrypting, decrypting the message and keeping in text, what is the authenticity of that message? What the hmm. in lawful in, uh, in agency will do of that message? I can edit that message. The purpose of th their objective is to read the message. And the whole paper was drafted, what I mean, for the e-commerce, security of the e-commerce, right. not the national security.